just in case there are a few people out there that miss it. We want to make sure you get to see it. So I'll let the poll go for a little bit longer, actually. Todd, why don't you you jump in? So welcome, uh, welcome everyone who's just filing in late here. But I'm going to turn it over to Todd, and uh, he's going to welcome everybody and, and take you into the coaches portion of our program. Thanks, Keith. Um, it's great to be here tonight. For those of you that haven't met me or don't know me, my name's Todd Kennett. I'm the class of 91, and I'm lucky enough right now to serve as a spirit of 57 director of rowing. And um, as I was going down through the list tonight of everybody attending, it was, uh, it was downright touching because I realized probably two-thirds of you I've had pretty close contact with over the years, and it's, it's been a lot of fun, and I started getting memories as I started looking at all of you thinking, like, wow, how, how exciting. Um, obviously, this is a really tough time, and a lot of people are going through different ways of emotions with this. Um, and I tend to be a little bit more on the positive side, which is really hard to possibly imagine in this whole mess. But uh, I would start with this. Back in the fall, uh, a bunch of freshmen walked on campus. And uh, Keith, do me a favor, throw that picture up of the freshmen. I think it was that second slide or something. And um, as they walked in, they look at each other and they, they have this just sort of first meeting and they sort of put their hands on each other's shoulders and they start like, yeah, we're going to be a great crew. We're going to be a great group together. And as they start bonding a little bit, you know, things, how do, how do you bond when you get in there? The first time you look and you shake each other's hand, yeah, we're going to be a great crew. But then the picture to the right, you know, there's, there's the beautiful one. Uh, here's the senior captain with a, a junior. Both of them are probably the, 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 bread and butter of this year's varsity and two strokes off the dock in the on the first practice of the year they flipped over so this is coach McCarthy pulling them back up to the dock and, and bailing them out as we started the season it's like oh man this is going to be slow but it's those trials and tribulations that as you start doing these kind of things and you end up going through the races you sweat together you laugh together you cry together and you start making that bond and that bond becomes one of those things that over time nothing replaces it. It, it it's those trials and we've all lived it. we've all been part of it where you're part of something special and it doesn't always mean winning but a lot of times it does and that's what makes it even more special when you win but it's that work together that time together where in in the bunks in florida you learn who snores and who doesn't snore you learn who works really hard who doesn't work really hard and and those that achieve and uh, bring all, everybody else along together you become that much more endeared to each other and then keith Oh, did we lose Todd? Okay, uh, well, <laughs> Todd was just getting going. Uh, Am I back on? All right, you're back. <laughs> what happened? I'm I back. Think you, got, you got a little too excited to ride the cables over there. I didn't. You were just asking me to go to a different slide, I think. Go to that, the, the Molstein slide. So all of a sudden, here you are 60 or 40 years later, and you come back, and it's like you just never left. You did this work together. You have that bond, and that bond is what continues to, to always stay with you. And why do I say that, and I start with my, my hello with you, that is because it's that bond that continues, that we continue to make the experience with. As you row and the current generation of rowers is here, it's that bond that we're trying to create. And when we do a really good job, we have great boat speed. And that's what we're all obviously looking for. And it's your support that allows this to happen. You know, over the all, all year long, it's, it's been this fight of here, let's give this to the kids, give this experience to them, let's get them to do that. But it's your support, your gifts, your time, your effort that helps us to keep this alive and going. So I wanna say thank you to everybody. Uh, I can't tell you how big your participation is and how much it means. It, it doesn't need to be a million dollars a year. It could be a tiny gift. It could be a time gift you know, on the CRA and your hard work, the hardworking people on the CRA, the Cornell Rowing Association that make this all happen. And tonight, as I look down that list, I just wanna say thank you so much because it was amazing to see all the names and realize how much time and how much effort and how many funny stories and sad stories and great stories and stuff I owe to all of you. And, and it was, um, 
it's just great to see that. So without me bob babbling on much longer, thank you for being here tonight. I hope we give you something fun to, to watch and listen to. I'm going to uh, kick off to, to Coach Kerber uh, with the lightweight men. He has another part of our, our hello and, and come on in. Chris? Hey, Todd. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I was given about three minutes and um, something that we have around the household is my rowing stopwatch. So I'm going to start. And I'm going to promise you I'm going to go over. <laughs> but um, I, I, I was uh, watching the names come in today as, you know, Todd got his email, my email got, got out, Steve's email went out. And it was just like, wow, this is a big group. And, uh, and then I'm looking at the faces like Greg the Destroyer, Fuko, the best of the best. And uh, there's Gabe. And I can't wait to kind of browse. But anyway, um, I wanted to bring this home. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later um, if I have a little more time. But um, when, when this thing whole went, went down, it was probably the most challenging day of my coaching career. Yep. All of the times we've raced and, and made selections and had to do all that kind of stuff. Going to the boathouse that day was brought just, it brought the coaching staff, it brought the leadership, it brought the captains, it brought the team together uh, like I've never seen um, and it was pretty special. But anyway, um, as we move through the continuum of grief, and that is like embracing it finally, like accepting it, um, it's never going to get any better. But um, you look at how teams kind of function and then find meaning. So um, there's a link right at the very top of this whole group chat. It's a Twitter link. It's about a surgical team or an emergency team. And whenever I hear about team, my ears perk up, whether I'm right at, uh, listening to an article about Frank Vogel of the, of the LA Lakers that brought together this, uh, this team or, uh, or, or, or a, a famous hockey coach. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. But my, eye, my ears always peer, uh, uh, p pick up when that happens. Um, and then, like, there aren't any teams anymore. So what are we listen? What are we looking for? We're looking at the medical teams, the people out on the front front lines. How are they mobilizing? Like when the world is uncertain, when it's volatile, uh, when stuff's coming at you, and and and, and it's just super complex. Um, that's that's what I look at. But um, tonight I really wanted to honor, and I'm going to send you guys over to our Instagram. Can uh, can somebody put that up? Our Instagram on the. Uh, and you can see we've been honoring the seniors. We've been honoring the, uh, the, the medical professionals out on the front lines. Had a great uh, exchange with uh, Frank Rose, class of 74, in the last couple of weeks. Same thing, uh, uh, Ike Icono, uh, class of 09. He's down in, you know, working in New Orleans. Like, it's just tremendous. And having that, um, that light rekindled, like, hey, coach, thanks for reaching out. Um, I can only say, like, um, I'm really proud of these and we're going to be keep posting and I got another email out to the other doctors, but um, thanks uh, for those guys that are out there. Um, I'm going to pass you off to Steve because I'm right past three, three, three minutes. Um, Steve, you're next. I, I remembered to unmute myself. Um, so, uh, you know, I think uh, my part and one of the things is like the new guy I wanted to say is, um, I, I have really been looking forward, um, to, to this spring and get it, having that chance to, um, be able to meet all of our, uh, parents and supporters and alumni who, um, always come out to the, the regattas and come support the team. Um, and, you know, as we've been talking as a staff, uh, with everyone. I think that's, um, that's what we've really been missing. You know, we've done our, we've been able to do our team Zooms um, and, and be able to talk with everyone. Um, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> this was, uh, Keith is jumping in uh, and, and showing us our, our last, uh, our last practice uh, before everyone. It was, this is our last time on the water, um, and I just I just took everyone out 
and you know we took him out in the on the middle of the lake there and just I just said guys let it out scream um and after they got a little bit of screaming in the uh and yelling out their frustrations that's what that's what it turned to um and I do get you know while I'm talking to you guys I get like kind of chills there um because I think it's it was really cool um but yeah we're uh we're definitely uh, missing all of you and, and really happy for this forum um, to present everyone um, and present our seniors, uh, some, some of which are, are in, in the audience here. Um, you know, later on we'll hear from our, our, one of our senior captains uh, who will also kind of take you through like the athlete side of things. Um, but uh, before we go too long, I want to try to uh, catch up. I want to, we have a couple special guests um, out in the audience uh, and, um, and, you know, a few of our alums who uh, we're hoping can uh, uh, give us a little bit of a perspective from the, uh, from the other side. Um, I want to call on, uh, you know, Tracy, are you unmuted? I am unmuted. All right. Um, so I want to introduce uh, Tracy Iser here. Uh, I had to go go over over and look up her her bio uh, to get the full rundown because it's uh, it's getting longer um, uh, while she's been uh, competing. She's done great things uh, po both at Cornell and um, post Cornell. Um, highlights include uh, a gold in, in the women's quad at uh, the 2015 World Championships. And, um, and she was also in the women's quad in Rio. Um, and, and Tracy, I just wanna, you know, I know we're, we're limited on time with you. Um, I, wanna, I wanna lob a question. You know, we have a, lot, a few of our uh, current athletes uh, on the, on the call tonight um you know i think uh i'm gonna look down and read it because i had to i don't want to screw it up um so you know you had your season cut short too this year um i was hoping that uh you know you could talk briefly about that um just what went down uh leading up to it and then also hopefully you could impart some uh words of wisdom um, for the current students uh, as to how they should think about getting back on the horse and starting to think about getting ready for next year. Um, so Tracy, can you take it away from me before I ramble on too much? Sure. So like Steve said, I rode in the women's quad in Rio. And even before that Olympics was over, I knew that I wanted to come back and do another cycle. And I've really been looking forward to it. Um, we plan our lives kind of in four year chunks because nothing like this has ever happened before. So um, it's definitely been a very interesting experience. I think for me, when I first realized that things were not going to go to plan was when the World Cup starting getting canceled. We were supposed to go to World Cup two in Italy, um, which is in about a week and a half. I should have been leaving to go to Italy this weekend. And when that got canceled, it was sort of like, okay, I understand that happened in the beginning of March. I was like, okay, Italy's not a great place right now. Sure, this makes sense. But then once uh, the World Cup three in Switzerland got canceled, that um, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this poll. Uh, once the World Cup three got canceled, that I think hit me a little bit harder because I think before that, I had thought that maybe <laughs> things would continue on as normal. Um, and then when that happened, I think for me, that was actually the lowest point because I was like, oh, all of this that I've been working for and looking forward to, it's just not going to happen. And so when the Olympics got postponed, it was after New Jersey had moved to shelter in place. And the idea of continuing to train for the Olympics on my own with my erg on my porch at my house seemed incredibly daunting. And so 
when they got postponed, I don't want to say that it was a relief, but it definitely made sense. I felt like I had seen it coming. And so now I think I'm just trying to recalibrate. Um, I ended up taking a little bit of time away from the ERG. And right now I'm just getting back into training. I'm trying to build myself back up and just try to focus on the positive aspects and the things that I can control. Um, there were some benchmarks for myself personally that I had really wanted to hit before I retired because I had been planning on retiring after Tokyo. And so for the things that I didn't accomplish this year, um, I'm trying to look at it as, okay, now I get another chance. Like I am really trying to PR on my 2K and I didn't know that I was even gonna get to do a 2K this year. So now I have another chance. Maybe I will get to be better and fitter and faster than I have ever been before. And I also feel like this experience has really just helped me to appreciate the time that I have. Um, when I was thinking about being done after this year, especially when we were leaving California this winter, I was getting kind of sad. And I was thinking about how uh, I was gonna miss my teammates and how fortunate I feel to be able to do this. And so now it almost feels like I've been given the gift of more time and I'm just going to not take it for granted because I know now what it feels like to have those things kind of taken away from me and the days, not every day is great and some days you're just tired and you don't appreciate every little thing. But I think if I can sort of step back and look at the big picture, it's like, okay, this is an opportunity, one, to continue to challenge myself and improve and two, to just appreciate the journey, appreciate the people and hopefully next summer the experience will have been worth it. You never know, but I'm definitely going to keep putting in the work to see if I can find out. Awesome. Crazy, this is it. So thank, thanks a ton. That's pretty awesome. Um, we we want to hear from the other uh, guy that's that's along with you trying for the Olympics, and that's Alex. Uh, Alex, Hi, are you Alex. on some? I am. Oh, good. There you are. Uh, I want to tell you, I want my bicep to have that vein down the middle of it. If you're all looking at it, I'm like, I'm working on trying to do it. I've been doing a lot of push-ups, but it's not getting there yet. So anyway, beautiful. Um, for those of you that don't know Alex, he, he was a uh, class of 12. He, he's been on the U.S. team for a while, went to Rio's, trying for Tokyo. Um, my name. He was my assistant coach for, uh, what was that, three years ago you were the assistant coach here? Three years ago. No, oh, there you go. And uh, great to have you on tonight. And I have one really big question I need to ask you. What's it like when you're about to retire, setting yourself up to go back to school and they add 365 more days of training on? You know, at first I probably would have said it was a bummer, but uh, looking at it in the positive light, kind of like my year back in Ithaca, I only had three initially because I transferred there. Uh, maybe if I'd had that freshman year, my, my fourth year, Earlier on, I'd be done rowing already. Would have won a gold medal in Rio. Who knows? Uh, obviously, didn't happen. So now, just taking it, you know, week by week, month to month, and really, like Tracy said, trying to take advantage of it all. You know, the Cornell community has been phenomenal. I'm getting texts from guys right now that you know I, I coached three years ago, and uh, yeah, I think there are much bigger things going on than um, worrying about some guys rowing boats around, especially on the national team. So some time away is always fun. And yeah, just plugging away. It's all, all, all good things. Well, thanks, Alex. It's good to see you. It looks like you're doing well. Uh, Tracy, same to you. I hope the both of you are able to do really well and, and make some big, big, get some small splashes at the catch, but big boat speed. So there you go. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Cool. Um, I guess we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on, Keith. What we had a series of questions, didn't we? What was the first question you had that you, we were gonna go through? Keith, are you there? Yep, yep. So we uh, yeah. So now we're gonna jump into kind of some questions. Uh, give the ch coaches a chance to talk a little bit, and we're gonna start that off. And, and, and all of you feel free to to kind of give your own couple minute perspective on these. 
And again, uh, as we get towards the end of the evening, uh, we'll, we'll take the questions coming in from, from our attendees. Uh, you all touched on it a little bit, but certainly th this was a very difficult ending to the season or a season that never was. Uh, what what kind of came out of that? Were there any special moments with the team that Steve kind of touched upon with that video? But, you know, uh, all of our programs are kind of going through this or, or went through this. A lot of them did. Was there anything that, you know, kind of – at least create a silver lining or really allowed you to get in touch with the team in a way that maybe you weren't expecting? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and go first. Um, for me, it was a fact, obviously it's a shock. Everybody knows that, but uh, we're sitting there on the last night and a bunch of the guys came up to me and they had been working as boats, getting ready to go on the water that we had been on the water. This, this was one of the best springs we ever had. I hit crowbar 11 times in February. So it was like, wow, this is great. Um, and then we hit Chiganic in, in over winter break. So this was, we were ready. It was good. And uh, they came down and go, coach, we want one more night together as boats, meaning the varsity want to be the varsity, the JV, the JV. And they looked at me and said, we want to do a time trial just to see how fast we were. Because I hadn't really let them open up yet. Uh, we had done practicing stuff, but we hadn't really opened up. I'm like, you guys name the piece. What do you want to do? It's your night. And um, it's those nights that as a coach, you're just touched because your athletes are motivated. When they're motivated and they want to do something like, you want to help them, that's your job. And all of a sudden it's like, hey coach, we want to do this. We want to achieve something. Even on a night where they should be blowing it off and just laughing and being like, what are we going to do now? Instead, they're like, we need to prove to ourselves that we did something this year. And the varsity to there, it was awesome. We just went out and from stroke one, it was like, boom, in the water, the releases were quiet. The, the, they were moving together. The blade work was some of the better blade work I'd seen all year. They went and popped off a thousand meter stretch. And I told them you could do it on a straight stretch or you can wherever you want. And they're like, we want to do it on the turn because the turn is everything on our course. So they went and did it on the turn, you know, and here's where you're supposed to be slowing down under the turn the three or four splits anyway with the rudder turning. And they went and nailed a 252. And it was like, I would have been driving home on a normal practice night, really excited in 38 degree water and go pop a 252 off with very low current. Uh, what do you say? You know, it, good job, guys. You know, just good job. You, you worked. It's a, we were in a rebuilding year, and we rebuilt ourselves to a point where we had good boat speed going. So good job. It was, that's all I could say to them. I, uh, my heart goes out to them that they didn't get to find out with other people there. But that's mine. It was, it was a moment that at least they'll leave this year having achieved something, knowing that they've, they, they created some boat speed. It was that night. I don't know how it would have been. No, none of us will ever know if it was enough. But there you go. I'll stop talking. Chris or, or Steve? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think you touched on it, Todd, it was, you know, it's resilience, right? Like it's, there's a surprising, I, I shouldn't say surprising. It's, uh, it's something you hope that you can expect that resilience, um, in your team. And, you know, for us, it was the same thing. Like, um, you know, I'd ask them, you know, as things were developing over that, that week to take the, take the view that, um, you know, we have to continue to prepare because it'd be like, uh, you know, in, in Ithaca, we know this, it'd be like anticipating a snow day um, and not having class the next day and then waking up and seeing green grass. Um, you know, we got to continue to prepare because we didn't know what, what was going to happen. Um, and then, you know, we came out and, you know, I gave them, gave them the news and, you know, I said, all right, what do you guys want to do? And, and they said, let's go rowing. You know, so uh, I think they were most excited. We did uh, our that final row there. We did a uh, I had the, the seniors do a little bit of a you pick them there where I let them pick lineups, boats, oars, coxswains, everything. Um, and and I said, you know, it, it was funny because I, I forget who uh, who picked it, but one of them picked the uh, pick, pick the new eight first. They've been uh, eyeing it on the on the rack there, uh, you know, and they were like, is that, is that fair game? Is that, is that fair game? And so they were, uh, they were excited and glad they got to take that out uh, once before, uh, before we uh, called it uh, a year. So. Well, I think we might've lost coach Kerber again, so he's not, 
Chris came in and out. He's um, not going to be able to answer this question, but it was a little softball <laughs> question anyway. So right, we'll save yeah. that. We'll save the tougher ones for Chris. Um, so let's jump into uh, our, our actually uh, our facilities and our equipment. How we how's our fleet uh, facilities holding up? The boats holding up? Any any special wish list items that uh, this audience should know about? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna uh, I'll jump in again first, Steve, and then Chris. You guys jump in right after me. Uh, I'm gonna make this one really brief. We have a fantastic place, Cayuga Lake. It's awesome. Uh, everybody knows it has its days. I'm watching you guys flash up a 30 degree uh, burr and somebody else put something about 38 degree water. Like, yeah, we all know what it is. It has its moments, but you guys know that the water is amazing. It, when it blows 50, you can still row in the lower inlet, the upper uh, out on the lake. And then the boathouse right now is magnificent. The fleets look really good. Everybody ha seems to be lined up. We have ergs, RP3s. It's, it's there for us to do. So thank you. It's your support that put it there. Thanks. Yeah, I would, I would say, you know, it's a softball. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's coming in my first year. It's been, it's been great. You know, the, the stewards that came before me, um, you know, and you guys have made a, a good effort in terms of keeping everything current, keeping everything uh, together. And, you know, it's just really appreciative um and for us you know it's just um it's really awesome to you know continually um have an eye on on you know continually trying to you know replace and and keep keep the equipment fresh as as new new things and new advancements come out so it's it's awesome so i think if we can just keep going with the path we are that that'll be i'll be excited um, I think Chris would probably agree. Oh, there Chris. he is. Chris is back. There he is. Hi, Keith. Hi, Todd. Yeah, I fell off there. Um, no, but um, in our bay uh, is the Schlett for two. Um, hi, Walt and Cindy. Um, that has not been rowed yet. Uh, we also have two other straight fours that parents bought. Um, it goes to the magnitude of, um, of our alums. And um, yeah, I, I have a I have a great fleet and we're moving boats out and, and uh, it's super, um, the, the fleet's super comfortable, but it's, it's like what's behind the, the, the carbon fiber. It's, it's the people, it's the names, it's the Harneys, it's the Screaming Eagles, which was named after Frank uh, Collier, our, our, our first uh, uh, perfect season sprints win and IRA win. Um, that's like the, the depth of it. And then there's just more, more classes, more individuals coming forward. Like, yeah, we want to buy, we want to get you a boat class of 89, just put money on, on the table. We want to get these guys a boat. We want to be a part of this. So um, I think we have just a lot of gratitude about that. And uh, yes, the facility, I am the luckiest guy and I have the best place to go to work every day. The boathouse, the boathouse. Unfortunately it's empty. Now I found myself sitting in the parking lot, looking at the water all the time like a dog with who's the kids went off to school and uh, you know, and I just got to deal with that. But anyway, um, Keith, back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. So this next topic gets a little touchy. I'm going to uh, keep an eye on Anita Brenner. And if she starts waving her arms, I'm going <laughs> to mute you coaches. So, uh, cause it's about recruiting and there's things you can say, things you can't say. I think you all know the rules here, but uh, generally speaking, how's it going? Uh, you know, what are you doing? With regards to recruiting, has anything changed? I know we've, uh, you've, uh, you've, you've kind of stepped up your global game a little bit. Each person, uh, each coach, I'm sorry, want to talk about that? I can be first. Go ahead, Chris. And I'm going to pass it right over to Brumstead. Brumstead, you're, you're, you're turning on a dime here. He's, he's the mastermind behind getting these kids attracted to Cornell and teeing them up and making the whole thing work. Brumstead, where are you? Am I here? Just like that? Just like that. Wow, technology. Um, so I, I think just generally, um, I anticipate that most coaches throughout the league, both in men's and women's rowing, are probably ahead of the game relative to where they were, you know, at last, last year at this time or any year at this time, just because we don't have um, 
time commitment of the racing season, um, in addition to talking to prospects and you know reviewing results and all all that comes with recruiting. So there's obviously a lot more time. So personally, I've been able to connect um, with way more recruits this year uh, and past years. And then I would also add that I anticipate. Um, the ERG scores are going to be a lot faster this year because everyone is spending so much more time um, on the ERG since you can't row on the water. Um, so I can say from the lightweight side, there's already a large number of athletes in the mid 620s and probably several trending to go under 620, which is um, exciting to see. But, you know, missing out on the water results is uh, um, going to be a challenge in how we evaluate. So that's the lightweight side. All right, Coach Kennett, anything to add to the recruitment? Uh, yeah, I, I just got, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. No, Steve, go, oh. go ahead. You know, I would just say, like, we're all, I would say we're all adapting. Um, and on the women's side, I'm, I'm noticing that there's, you know, we're all trying to keep up our game. Uh, we're all doing our Zooms and, um, you know, trying to think of ways to, uh, to, you know, really, you know, catch, you know, catch these prospects' eyes um, without have them having the ability to come visit, um, you know. And so we're trying to, you know, put together – um, some, you know, we're going down the road with our staff, you know, trying to talk about, um, putting together, um, <clears throat> video of, uh, from our current athletes, you know, talking about some of the things that they feel make, makes Cornell great. Uh, so we can share that. Um, and yeah, for the most part, just, uh, really trying to be active communicators with everyone, um, Although it sounds like, from what I've been hearing, I think the uh, the online high school uh, is really uh, is really heating up right now. So um, they have less and less time to to speak with us. It was great when they were on a five week uh, spring break for a while. <laughs> Go ahead, Todd. Um, you know, in, in recruiting, I, I I look at three things right now for us, and uh, uh, my two staff guys, uh, Drew Tennant and. Kevin McCarthy uh, are probably out there somewhere. A huge, huge shout out to them. But basically, the three of us are starting to look at more at culture. Like, instead of just an ERG score, we're trying to look at how does the ERG score fit in as well as the guys, the kids' attitude. You know, are the, obviously, we need grades and stuff to get into Cornell. But, and the student athlete, is, does he actually have something he wants to study at Cornell? But then is he going to be the worker when he gets here? So we're looking for that culture. Uh, the second thing I say that's, that's changed a little bit and a lot this year, even more this year, is how much earlier it seems to be. I'm, I think I'm working at where I'm usually normally at in late September, and we're already there. Uh, we're, we're progressing pretty quick. And maybe it's just the extra time that we have that we're not on the water. And maybe it could be some time that, you know, these kids are, have their time as well. But a lot of kids are calling me, and we seem to be progressing really well with, how do you fit Cornell and does Cornell actually fit you? And then the third thing is um, we've become a little more world, world bound. Uh, Kevin went around the world literally this year looking at kids and programs and, and getting names. And we have, I just talked to a great kid from Australia the other, the other night. I was absolutely endeared to this kid. He was just a, a go-getter. He was all about, he wanted to study and he wanted to go fast. And how was he doing it? He had his little erg and he was showing me some of his video and then he's telling me these extra projects he's doing outside of school. And I was like, wow, this is a great kid. You know, he's just a good kid. He's, he's what we want. He's that kind of go-getter kid. Not that I'm saying that we need to go for him, but he's one of those guys that, you know, you, find, you don't find a lot of them like that, but he's one of them. So we'll see. Um, hopefully it starts yielding out and we get a, a little more representation, but we're not just looking for foreign guys. We're looking for foreign guys that want to go fast at Cornell fits. So there you go. Thanks coaches. So if you have more questions about any of these topics, throw them in the group chat and we'll get to them at the, uh, the end of the evening, as I mentioned before, right now we're going to jump to the fun portion of the program where the coaches get to roast their current rowers. Uh, so we want to welcome our, uh, our team captains, 
Uh, and uh, they are Chris Wilkins, Cameron Bertosa, and Caroline Ressler. And we're going to welcome them. They can go ahead and unmute themselves. And again, if you have questions for our captains, uh, you can put those in the chat as well, and we'll let them respond a little bit later. Uh, Todd, do you want to do you want to go first with? Yeah, I mean, we could basically just sit here, and, and I'm I'm looking for a statement from the, the three captains. You know, you guys can go, go right in order of your pictures or something, but just a statement of where where you think your team is. Uh, how do you how do you deal with it? Did, did we? What's going on now? And I know, uh, uh, you know, some of you you're graduating and stuff, but how's it going to feel to to not have that season? Give us a statement. It doesn't have to be long. Just what? How are you holding up? And what are you doing? Yeah. I can kick it off quickly. First of all, Coach, brutal starting out with just me flipping the pair. That's a tough way to start the evening for me. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I hope everyone's happy, is, uh, you know, healthy and spending some time with the family. It's good to see so many faces. Um, I, think, I think obviously it kind of goes without saying we're all devastated um, with the abrupt ending of our season. Um, uh, one way to kind of put it in familiar terms to many of you is like it was as if – is that feeling of like – your final race at IRAs, but three months early in a surprise and you never get to race the whole season. So it was, it was uh, shocking, abrupt, um, and devastating. I think, I think for the heavies, it was, it was particularly tough because our fall season was, was a little bit disappointing. Uh, and it was something where we, we were sort of uh, underperforming in the fall, in my opinion. And, and though to an onlooker, it might have been, looked like we were a bit discouraged, I think I think internally we were actually more confident and motivated than ever. Uh, certainly I was, and, and the varsity lineup was. So uh, to have that opportunity to sort of prove ourselves stripped from us made it even more difficult. Uh, I think with a successful fall, we, we, you know, we would have had uh, sort of already proven the ability, capabilities of our team, but we're sort of left without have ever, been a, ever being able to prove what we're able to accomplish. So, so that was particularly difficult, I think. Um, obviously, like in these past few weeks, though, like like many people have said, um, we've had to kind of take a step back and look at the positives. And, and uh, obviously, we're just incredibly lucky to have had this experience and be, be a part of Cornell Rowing at all. So, um, you know, though it's only three and a half years, it's three and a half amazing years. Uh, and it, it, uh, we're really, really blessed to have had this opportunity. Um, so uh, the other thing, Coach Kennett wanted me to, briefly touch on virtual class it's it's pretty miserable it's pretty brutal it's hard to get motivated i think i think i do think that rowers are, are uniquely equipped to to sort of handle the demands in the uh of virtual class i think you know it's hard to stay motivated it's hard to be disciplined it's hard to manage your time correctly but we have more skills than most students to be able to handle this well so um even though it's even though it's tough i, I think uh i do think the team's handling it better than most people on campus and and Again, we're lucky to have, have the skills that we have developed through rowing. So, yeah, anyways, I don't want to take too much time. Any other questions, please let me know. I could, I could talk rowing for days. So, uh, good, good to see all of you, and, and uh, thanks for the time. One of the other captains. There's got to be another one out there. Are the other two on? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Okay. Cool. I mean – yeah, there's no really sugarcoating it. It definitely sucked for for things to end the way they did. I mean, my opinion, it's it's worse than losing. You you don't really know, you know, what could have been. Um, but like as a as some uh, people said, I think ultimately it's like a really special event that the team th went through together, and kind of similar to 2018 IRAs for us. I think it's gonna kind of shape the culture of the team going forward. I think ultimately that's going to end up being a positive. And I remember, uh, I think the day after uh, we found out the season was getting canceled, Alex Coast, the other captain of the lightweights, I heard him say that um, someone had asked him if, if he knew things were, were going to end this way, would he want it, uh, want it to happen again? Or would, would he be okay? going through the season again and he said yeah definitely and I think that's kind of you know a note to the culture of the team and like the sport itself like it's not all about just racing at the end but 
you know, the whole journey through it was pretty special. Um, in terms of uh, the underclassmen, I mean, it sucks for them too. Like, it, it's not just the seniors that that got the experience taken away from them. You only get so many shots to to do something really big, and you know, that's that was also taken away from them as well. One of those shots, and so I think it's important to recognize. You know, it's not just the seniors going through this, uh, but also the underclassmen. And, and so, yeah. Um, but I think overall, like, the team's doing well to keep in touch. I know guys have gotten on Zoom calls together, um, you know, just to catch up every, every week or so and uh, just have fun, like, trying to stay fit and look forward to next year. Like IRAs is 14 months away this year instead of 12, like usual. And so it's just about, you know, extending the long-term goal. Perfect. Where's our third captain? She on? Carol, Caroline, you should have the power to unmute yourself. Yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, yeah, obviously to echo the other two captains who have spoke, this has obviously been a really challenging time for the team. Um, especially for the seniors. Um, the Ivy League was the first league to cancel the season, which I'm sure many people know, like 24 hours to a couple of days before any of the other leagues. Um, Katie, my co-captain, and I were in our 2.30 class when we found out. Obviously, we left immediately. <laughs> um, and then this transition to that last day of practice um, that they showed the video of earlier, um, and that was a really special moment for all of the seniors and all of the underclassmen, I hope too, because we didn't know that that was going to be our last day on the water. So I think myself and all the other seniors are really grateful to Steve to making that happen for us because that'll be a really special memory for us. Um, and then from there, it kind of continued um, as a roller coaster. It, it bounced back and forth between being like, okay, maybe we'll be able to practice in six hour weeks and then that got canceled. And then, okay, we're gonna be able to have a banquet this weekend and then that got shut down. And so it, to echo one of the words that Steve used earlier, um, the senior class has been an extremely resilient class. Um, you saw in the picture earlier, there are 14 of us, which is definitely the biggest class in, my time at Cornell um, and for a little while now on the women's side. Um, and that resilience really carried over and showed um, as we moved through plan A, plan B, plan C, like all the way down to plan Z, um, we were able to plan our own banquet um, and we were able to do our graduation pictures and we were able to fit all of that in, which I think really speaks to the resiliency of the senior class in being able to kind of make those memories for ourselves, albeit not in the way we wanted to. Um, and so from here, now we're kind of looking into what our future is going to be as alumni. And we're really excited to join this group of alumni, albeit a few months earlier than we originally would have hoped. Um, and on that note, we do want to say a thank you to the alumni who have reached out to us either via email or Instagram DMs, um, all of the alumni panel that sent us a cake, like all of those things um, have definitely been appreciated. And we love knowing that you guys are there for us and we're really excited to join this group. Thank well, you. thank you very much, Captains. Ty, do you have any more questions? No, no, I was gonna say if, to the alumni, if, if you don't know what uh, Colonel was talking about, she was saying that, um, the members of the CRA were able to reach out to the senior class, to each indiv individual senior, and, and basically just send, it, send an email talking a little bit about their rowing and, and stuff like that. It was just a way that the CRA uh, helps to continue the, the experience of just a, a helping to heal this m miserable position that we're in, to be honest. So they reached out and former rowers just saying hello and, and we're there and thank you for your time and, and being uh, uh, doing your job here at Cornell. So just so you know. Go ahead, Keith. Okay, well, let's jump into some of the questions that have come in. But before we do that, I'm going to share our uh, poll results from earlier. And it looks like we have a 
quite a few former and current rowers. So former rowers, almost 60% of our population, 10 prospective rowers. So I hope they've been impressed. <laughs> uh, so more, Cornell, and we have four Harvard spies. So I don't know who those are, but uh, I'll see your way out. A little late for that, I guess. Uh, and then uh, the one word that summarizes your big red rowing experience. Uh, most people said friendship and transformative. So that's great. I think that's, that's, that's what we want. Not too many clams. Less pain than I may have guessed, but that's good too. And a fair amount of glory in there as well. So uh, thanks everyone for taking that poll. And we will uh, jump into some of the chat questions. Uh, first one I see is from Eric Sargent, wondering if can Cornell Rowing construct an online training program with the help of uh, exercise physiologists. How about online ERG competitions? Anyone want to take that one on? T Todd, you gonna you gonna build that online program out? I don't know if I'm gonna build an online one. I, I, there might be a, a issue with um, compliance on that one, believe it or not, because right now we are actually held to. We can suggest workouts to our guys, but we can't collect them. So we have to be a little bit careful what we do in that matter. So, but I can say, I know that the guys uh, uh, do a lot with, with Zoom and playing around with things back and forth with each other in terms of, of um, sort of a, a competition. Uh, the other day, one of our guys, Pat Moore, went out on a little jog, he claimed. And next thing you know, he felt really good. It was a beautiful evening out. He ended up running for two hours and he realized he had to turn around then and instead of calling his mom, he realized he was about 11 and a half miles out. He said, you know, I've never run a marathon before. I might as well just run home and I'll be done. So he ran a whole marathon. And, you know, talking about new ceilings and standards. Sorry, that's a little tangent. But uh, that was to the team. And I know that other guys have been asking whether that's something they should do. I said, no, no, <laughs> we don't need to run marathons. We need to learn how to get stronger. So, uh, but interesting ideas. I, there is something. And we, we can look into something like that. But I'm not, I don't think we can actually run that. Yeah. Do we want to, uh, I think, uh, Caroline or Katie, do you guys want to like unmute yourself and say, uh, talk about just quickly about some of the things you guys are doing, um, to keep it fresh with your teammates. Then we want to tell us what the word of the day was. Um, I, hi, this is Katie. <laughs> I, we, we've been doing word of the day, like Steve mentioned, has been sort of a challenge that's been bounced around our team. Um, and so we have a list of an alphabet that corresponds to different parts of a circuit that you then build by choosing a word. Um, and so I think the most recent one, Caroline, you can correct me, was touchdown related to touchdown the bear, um, which was a tough one, I will say. There was at least four minutes of wall sitting in that. Um, but they've all kind of been a similar theme from Cayuga Lake to touchdown to BMA. Um, so it's definitely been a fun way for us to stay connected. And then it's just sort of been a mix of definitely using Zoom still um, and then sharing workouts, sharing pictures of people doing things at home. So we've all definitely been connected, although not quite the same as being in Ithaca. Yeah, Maggie sent me touchdown. It was a lot of push-ups for me to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's you know, a lot there. You know what I would throw into this is the CRA could run it and run it off the CRA website, which we do have. So the C if somebody wanted to do that, they could run it off the CRA website and masters could get into that. But I'll leave it there. All right, Jeff Cornett uh, wants to know, will it be a 50 year reunion for uh, the class of 1971? Ask We're putting Nadia on that. Nadia's here watching. <laughs> I think we need to ask the governor and the president and whoever's running the, uh, the medical part of this country. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through a, a lot of conversation. Uh, I, I have a quick question for the, for the captains. Uh, you know, what, what about your rowing experience at Cornell? do you think is really going to serve you well long-term as you, as you head into uh, the, the professional world, the real world, as they say? Uh, I, I can, I can start off at least. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's easy to say, first of all, like the network you make is valuable, but to, to be perfectly honest, I think 
I think the most valuable thing is, is the lessons that you learn in terms of character building and, and uh, sort of the, the traits that you pick up as a rower. And that was something that I think wasn't totally clear to me until I did an internship this past summer where I started to really apply everything and, and just draw the connections where, uh, you know, I, I was, you know, one of the first ones into the office every day. I was the one who, you know, might, might be able to get the, get the stuff in on time uh, or, you know, be at the meeting and, and be confident enough to participate, even though there are people more senior than me. So it's, it's, I think it's really subtle things that you don't even realize are tied to rowing, but uh, actually come into play every day in, in a professional setting. So for me, that's, um, I mean, the, the list is endless, right? Like time management, discipline, uh, passion, motivation, I could go on and on, but really at the end of the day, I think it's the character traits you build. I don't think it's necessarily, obviously the network's valuable, but um, I think there's more to it than that. Cameron or Caroline, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, on the most basic level, I um, received my full-time job that I'll be starting in September um, because of a like athlete interview session um like they pulled different athletes from different schools um so on the most basic level i wouldn't have gotten my job without athletics um but kind of to echo what chris said i think a lot of the traits carry over and it's really easy to talk about specific examples of leadership and time management when it's something you so easily put into practice every day almost without even knowing it and I think a lot of the people on our team um, have those skills because without it, you you couldn't really make it, especially as an Ivy League student athlete. And so it's, it's not even about talking about those skills. It's about showing those skills every day. And that's easy to talk about in an interview. Uh, for me, I'd say um, just being able to deal with like, what's going on at the time, like in the words of Brumstead, just figure it out. And like, I think that applies a lot to, you know, people in classes I hear complaining about how much work they have and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, when you do this sport, you just have to figure it out and deal with like, deal with everything else that's going on. And so I think that's the most applicable to the real world. Coaches, uh, we have a question from uh, Ross who wants to know, what do you see as the most important new training or racing tech? Huh. Um, tech, I, you know, the, the thing that for me has been pretty helpful is the, uh, is the Empower Orlock. I like that a lot. Once I get a more or less set lineup so I can adjust it to the guys, that, that's been pretty helpful for guys. Um, I really like that a lot. But really, it still comes down to the individual. So I, I would actually back up and be, make it simpler and just simply say, we've been individualizing more workouts, especially now that we have this huge hiatus of, of five months before we even see each other again, if we're lucky. Um, and we've gone back to more individualized, you know, this guy needs more power. This guy needs more, uh, uh low level, um, um, steady state, whatever, making it individualized per, for the person so that each guy can hopefully get what he needs the most and work on his weakness and, and, and get himself ready and prepared. Cause the individual still has to be able to be, become part of the crew and, and his weakness is the thing that we have to work on. So going back to that. So just working. And when I say working, it's the coaches working to help the athletes realize what their weakness is so that they, they can attack that and have the opportunity to, to work on it. I, I would also, I, I would also say, you know, I think um, there's a lot more attention to physiology um, now and, and that's, that's been growing. So, you know, how we, um, you know, as Todd said it with the Empower Orlocks, but it's, it's how we monitor um, the athlete's physiology. They're, um, you know, they have the support of, of sports med and, 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 you know, like this, that community really taking care of their uh, recovery and, you know, really just trying to pay attention from, uh, you know, I came in and I said, you know, don't, don't do anything in, 
in rowing that you wouldn't do in real life, right? Like really sticking to that um, exercise physiology background and really trying to train and pay attention to, um, you know, those fundamentals that their athletes are learning in the weight room. Um, and I think that's growing in importance, um, you know, and I think, you know, the lightweights are definitely uh, have been paying attention to, to that. Like it's not just, not just rowing, right? It's, you know, Bill, Chris, it's a little bit of also paying attention to just how we, how we treat the body as a machine, right? Okay. Uh, nice segue, Steve. Thank you for that. Um, I think um, definitely technology, you have to embrace things. I think um, being a, uh, uh, a hedge fund trader and, and futures and options, you can get taken away by data. Um, and a lot of, and, and, and what I would say is um, like, there's the applied science and you gotta be on top of that. You gotta be on top of what the nutritional values are uh, of each one of those, you know, training zones and what's important recovery, sleep, especially with our, our Ivy league, um, our Ivy league uh, student uh, are also personality types. Um, so um, there's that applied science thing, which is really, really important. It's also um, learning to have really good relationships with your guys. Um, that's the coaching piece, which is, you know, like the one minute manager, um, and then also empowering kids to make their own decisions out and out and make it decentralized so that they are closing the gaps on their own uh, personal assessment on where they need to where they are and where they need to go. Um, so that's exciting. But where I, I would say we spend most of our time and there is technology behind it. Um, it's leadership and it's just having an environment where we are so focused in on speed and squeezing everything out of every day. Um, it requires getting the right people in the door with the right type of character, um, knowing what uh, an Ithaca winter is like. And I will tell you, it's late April here. It has snowed, it has been 70 degrees. Um, everything has fallen out of the sky this week. So no surprises there for our um, Ithaca people, our alums who are living in probably more temperate areas. No surprises. Um, winter of 14, winter of 15, ice was 15 inches thick on the first day of spring off the dock. We have to have the right type of kids who are like willing to embrace that. Like, yeah, okay, another week on the earth, no problem. Another week with indoors, but um, there's definitely sports science behind it. The mastermind is Brumstead. Um, we definitely get into all this stuff. We both dealt with a lot of, you know, challenges as athletes we've kind of transported it into doing a lot of reading and things like that so anyway good good uh and somebody wrote dr kleshna yes there was a question if uh from john newman are the coaches still using the scientists who plotted all of those metrics and analyzed them that's the guy Kleshnev hasn't been here in a couple of years but i think we now have some of the technology that he he was first showing off like the Empower Orlocks, the Peach system between the, the, the three programs, this stuff floats around as, as we need it. So, so a lot of it's there, not as in depth as he, he wrote it, but and the RP3s for that matter, throw a lot of data that you can use um, that, that can help us measure and watch the kids. So he hasn't shown up in a couple of years. Well, thank you, uh, coaches. Thank you, U.S. team members. Thank you, players. But before we uh, say goodnight to everybody, we have one last video to share with you that hopefully rings a little familiar. Uh, enjoy it. Oh, the joy.
Keith Hannon. <laughs> Keith. Yeah. Uh, Andy Noel here. Before we sign off, Keith, I want to thank you for doing a terrific job tonight and all the investment you've put into this presentation. I also want to thank our coaches for recruiting and developing such a terrific group of young people. And finally, and, and perhaps most importantly, I want to thank the athletes for their incredible resilience and their attitude and their commitment to Big Red Rowing. And uh, it's all about you guys, and we're proud to have our coaching staff and all those that support you. Uh, but thank you for your hard work. And alumni, obviously on the call, it's been said many times, but you're the folks that are making it happen through your care and generosity. So have a great night, be safe out there, and uh, go Big Red. Thank you, Andy. Uh, we did want to, Ask everyone if you if you have feedback uh, about this session and if you're interested in possibly having uh, doing one of these for each individual program. That's something we've thought about. So, uh, you know, let the alumni office or the coaches know if you think that's something that would be of interest. So you have a chance to do a little bit of a deeper dive uh, into one of the specific programs, perhaps. Uh, with that, uh, I will. If uh, each coach wants to kind of give a. a Final sign off, we'll, we'll call it a night. I'll just say BMA. Thank you all. I don't know if Chris is saying thumbs up or there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you to the, uh, I think almost 300 folks that uh, joined us. Uh, this is good night from, uh, Ithaca, as Chris laid out, it's pretty cold and there's a little bit of white precipitation on the ground even, even at this point. So uh, if, you're, if you're somewhere warmer, enjoy it. Uh, kind of what's become customary for us in, in these town halls is uh, unmuting everyone towards the end. And if you, if you want to give anyone a shout out, uh, could get a little chaotic, but hey, you've made it this far. So thank you so much for joining us and good night. Thank you. Go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to say hi. Hey, Don John Jones. Take care, everybody. Thank hey, everybody, thank we'll you. Go. Thank go you. red. Thank you, Don. Yeah. Yeah. Go red. Mikey, still around? <laughs> Great job, Kerber. Thank you. I've been hey, hey Tom Linden, you still on? <laughs> I've loved the virtual backgrounds. I know. Yeah, Is Hafner still drinking in the background? <laughs> hey, who's golfing? I thought you were golfing earlier. Oh, who, me? Yeah. Yeah, we had to, we had to leave. Hey. Bobby needed Chipotle. Wow. Yeah, it was. <laughs> BMA, everybody. Um, uh, AJ! AJ! Hi, Paula. Hey, Ross, good to see you again. Good to see you all. Uh, did you see the virtual backgrounds of you? <laughs> I thought Goldstein was the best. <laughs> I didn't see it. Millennium Falcon. He had Gotta the Millennium go fast. Falcon behind him. Gotta go Gotta fast. fast. Gotta go fast, Gotta that's fast. right. right. So I think we would have a hard time making weight. I, 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 I went, like I said, I went after drink. Oh, God. I was watching you and after and I were on the screen together for a second. And I was looking at our picture on my wall and I'm like, man, have we hey, Chapman. Nice. Betty O'Neill. Peter Davis. So. Good. My daughter has turned my room into her study college room, and <laughs> I go down and I see my rowing picture now, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness, I was I'm changed." Hi, this is Peter Davis. I heard my name, I think. Hi from yeah. New York. Hey, Peter. Hey, Bill Kingston. How's it going? Doing good. Thanks. It, it was that Dennis Woodside on Laura Woodside's account, or was that actually Laura? <laughs>
I tried to call him out. I could have drawn him out. Is he still on? He, he, uh, he said he may or may not be able to make it. He's a busy guy out there. <laughs> I know he is. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So, hey, Chris, Kerber, while you're there. So, what should a 50-year-old pull on a, for 500 on a ur doing the 2K? <laughs> Come on, what are you doing these days, huh, Chris? I'm just give me a I'm goal. On the road. I'm running. Uh, you got to talk. To talk to Brumstead. He's got all the stats. You should get on our uh, Strava. You should get. On, we're doing a Strava uh, meeting. Okay, so the Strava. Would I just search Cornell Rowing Strava, or what do I search? Just, just, just email me and just say I want to get on the Strava group. Like uh, Tom, uh, uh, Tom Wolf ran the stadium. We have a Strava picture of that. Um, Brumstead rides, guys run, it's all over okay. the place. It's just, it's just doing your workouts in a, in a, in a community. And, um, yeah, no, it's great. I do Strava yeah. all the time, but I know you guys had one. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's like Strava 150 or something like that. And a lot of lightweights in the league are doing it. And I'm sure, um, there obviously is a need out there for masters rowing programming. And I think, I think it'd be, could be a fun webinar, uh, uh, class of 77 guy reached out to me. He's like, Hey, I'm a master's rower, but I'm, or I'm a master's athlete, but I don't row all that much. And, you know, he just yeah. like, he's, his head is spinning. But anyway, um, yeah. thanks for. Who should I talk to about, a, who should we talk to about equipment these days? Like, if I want to get a single skull, who's the best guy to talk to these days? Talk to me. What is, what is, talk to you. what is Saul's background? What is that? It's the Millennium Falcon, man. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> You're like this big. Yeah. Punch it. Um, yeah. Um, we some we sometimes yell, uh, sell used equipment, um, singles. You know, you got to pick up the rowing news. Um, try them out. Mm -hmm. They let you demo them. Mm -hmm. um, one of your classmates, uh, uh, Wes Sands, just tech emailed me and said, "Hey, I got one of these boats. I got uh, some water to row on." So he's super psyched about it. So That's cool. Hey, yeah. Todd, what's the biggest lake you caught? First thing we did, Ross, coronavirus. We drove to California and bought a single. Uh, <laughs> Ross, what was your question? What's the biggest lake you caught? This spring? Yeah. Uh, we got a couple around 31 inches so far, so I'm not sure what that's weighing. It's probably, it's probably like 12, 13 pounds. That's a big fish. Yeah, we've gotten, we've gotten like four or five of them so there far. Is. They've been hitting pretty good, so... <laughs> One good That's great about this. I go fishing. Yeah, I know. That's some great pictures you put up the other day. Have you, have you been out at all? Just for some, just the local little rivers with my fam, my my kids. It's mm -hmm. like old times. It's like when they were seven and ten. You know, now they're teenagers, but we all get goofy at the river, so it's fun. <laughs> That's right. Get outside. Yeah. I'm, so I'm caught some nice little browns. Single. That's all. I'm dying to get in the single, but there's there's no way to get in the boathouse. We can't even go in the boathouse right now yet. Oh, you're not even allowed in, huh? No. No. Sounds like an opportunity for a caper. <laughs> <laughs> a midnight row. You can take Sneak whatever you there. want. I see, uh, I see Brooke Shum there. Uh, I was responding to your, your email about doing a, a little master's, you know, seminar, you know, at all levels. I mean, you can go the Dennis Woodside route uh, or you can, um, you can be like me. I just meet up with the football coach and we go running every twice a week for six miles. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, that row, by the way, the video of those rowers was pretty good. Those are the 150s. They look pretty sweet. Uh, Wes, I almost asked a dangerous question. I was going to ask, what are the dumbest nicknames the coaches have heard over the years? But I think you gave out most of them. Oh, no. <laughs> Amor, how's New Zealand right now? Is it winter? It's it's uh, just the changing of seasons. It's sunny out there by the pool, so not too bad. It's about, uh, I'm trying to do American conversion, probably high 60s, mid to high 60s right now. Getting colder. Oh. It's snowed here six out of the last eight days. Yeah, so I'm, you know, maybe being here is not so bad after all. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah, you're just in the, wrong, you're in the wrong state, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard, hold on, James, I heard that New Zealand went down a level of, of terror. They're letting you go outside again. Is that what I heard? 
Yeah, well, not till Tuesday. Yeah, on Tuesday they're going to go to level three, but basically there's no change. You're only le allowed to leave for exercise or if you're if you an essential worker at a supermarket or like a, a, a plumber or something like that or a, a cop or something like that. Um, right. And if you and you can get takeaways as well. So it's going to be there's four weeks of extreme lockdown, and then next two weeks is like lockdown, but you takeaways. So we're all getting a bit sick of each other here. <laughs> in our bubble, a bubble of five people. <laughs> Oh, no. Beautiful. Well, good to see you, man. Good to see you. All right, everyone. I'm signing off. Have a great night. BMA. Later, Ross. Take care of yourself. Yep. Bye-bye. All right. Well, I think it, right. uh, if any, unless anyone has any more shout-outs for the coaching staff or each other, <laughs> I'm going to – I'm going to shut this meeting down because what we find is sometimes people aren't sure how to exit the meeting. <laughs> and they, they need me to close it down for everyone to leave. So, <laughs> or for them to get, the, get it off their screen. So they're waiting for the next cut scene, but they don't realize <laughs> it's not, we're, we're not Marvel. Keith, thanks. That was great. It was good to Thank see you. everybody. I hope everybody has a, a healthy couple months here and uh, we get out of this thing. So take care of yourselves. Yeah. yeah. Is this, is this being recorded? I think there are people who will, enjoy watching it who weren't on it yeah so it is being recorded and usually uh, you give uh, give me a couple days and i'll send a, a follow-up email to the entire rowing community with a link to the recording so everyone that missed it can uh, catch it and if you want to watch it again uh, compelling compelling television here i can i can understand that so it'll be available i didn't say i want to watch it again but <laughs> <laughs> you know other other people thank you at, at yeah. your convenience Absolutely. Good night, everybody. Thanks, right, Thank you. Good night, everybody.